Holiday and Christmas gifting. Um, if there's something that is incredibly famous when it comes to our Irish programming, our Made in Ireland, um, frankly, line uh, here at the queue that spans all different counties within the island and certainly all beautiful um, heirloom crafts that are traditional Irish, we would have to be talking about more knitwear, sweaters, again, merino wool, but a company called Erincraft, which since 1957, the county of Kildare, where they're based, they have been manufacturing some of the most beautiful Erin knitwear. Um, I was just talking to Jane Tracy backstage and I, and I said to her, I said, so Erin, is, is that a county in Ireland? She said, no, it's a, it's a group of islands right off the coast of Ireland. And you know, some 4,000 years ago, the Erin people, fish, think fishermen, farmers, um, you know, it, there is a, it is such a ridiculously rich history. And so Erin Craft is the name of the country, uh, excuse me, the company, and Barry Cullen is gonna join us from it uh, momentarily, but I wanna just give you your choices because this is it, sale priced only until the end of today, colors in this merino wool, open front, sweater cardi, kissing center front, and obviously we're gonna talk a lot about the meaning of the stitches because there are a lot of different cable stitches in this one. Our, um, this is our uh, soft gray. No, this is our, standby, meadow gray, parsnip. I'm gonna go with parsnip because I love a parsnip, so I know parsnips are those color, that color. Um, this is our parsnip. Then we move on to our wineberry. We have regular and petite in this, double extra small up to triple extra large. This is our soft gray. Next up, the vibrancy of this blue, which is called Midnight, and it's like marled with some black. It's gorgeous. And then mine, my favorite, um, is what we call, uh, uh, standby, meadow green. Okay, these are never coming back in all of them. Knit in Ireland. Barry Cullen is here. Uh, Barry, hi, it's Sean, straight from hi, America. Sean, hi. How are you doing? Good to talk to you. I think I, I think I think we worked together very briefly on a Christmas in July show, maybe three oh, or great. four years ago. Glad to hear yeah. it. All right, Barry Cullen. Good, um, good to be here with you. I'm very very pleased to be here with you as well. Tell everybody where you are coming live from, and a little bit about uh, Aaron Craft because you know you guys are the quintessential, like the heart of Ireland when it comes to knitwear, and certainly cable knits and cable stitch and this whole thing. Well, I'm currently broadcasting from uh, uh, where, where I live in Dublin, but where Arncraft is based is actually in a town called Monastreven uh, in County Kildare, which um, if, if you saw if you, if, on, on the map that you were using there, if you, if you, it's just maybe an hour inland from Dublin, so it's kind of in the midlands of Ireland. Um, and the company was started in 1957, I think, as you mentioned, by my grandmother, Molly Cullen, and... Uh, uh, it was then continued by her two sons, Paul, my father, and then my uncle John, who was a guest on QVC for Iron Craft for many, many years. He's now retired. And it is then, um, the, now we are now the third generation, myself and my brother Niall, that are continuing on the, the family tradition of making these beautiful uh, modern garments. So um, I can't wait for you to teach me because I hear like there's a stitch, like a diamond stitch it implies health, a cable stitch, safety and good luck, a basket stitch, trellis stitch. I mean, much like plaids in Scotland, the, 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 the stitches, you know, they all symbolize something. And so I, I just wish to be your student right now. But sure, first, I want every, if you could just explain before we get a deep dive into the stitch. So this is Merino wool from Merino sheep. And these are all uh -huh. knit right there in Ireland. Right there in Monastreven County Kildare. And as you mentioned, the merino wool, it's, 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 it's this luxurious wool that um, I think if, if people have the memories of a traditional Irish or hand-knit sweater from when they were very young, it was a coarse, that old-fashioned type of wool that you didn't want to wear next to your skin. But if, you, if that's your experience, merino wool will change your mind completely. It's perfectly soft. It has these incredibly long, silky fibres. I think as Paul mentioned earlier on, they're about, about, about one-fifth the thickness of a human hair. And these are the fibers that are brushing up against your skin. So, you're not, so even when I, I, I'm wearing a merino wool sweater here with a T-shirt, and it is mm -hmm. completely uh, soft against the skin. 
Um, so this, if, if, if you have had experiences like that with sweaters, I said try a merino wool sweater and it will completely change your mind. And as you mentioned, it's from this merino sheep, which is a, a breed of sheep that is specially bred for its wool. So this is a natural fibre, it's a renewable fibre. This is something that um, in this, in this work, day when we're trying to reduce our impact on the environment uh, with the, with, by using synthetics and um, acrylic fibers, et cetera, et cetera, using, using a natural fiber like merino wool. And of course, because the, it's, it's a natural fiber, it's going to respond to your body correctly. It's going to be, it's going to be regulating your body temperature rather than making you feel that kind of clammy overheating. Mm -hmm. And the Aran style knitwear, which I think, as you mentioned, was developed in these three little small islands off the coast of Galway in the Atlantic. Um, this type of knitwear was, was knit intentionally chunky. Um, to capture these little pockets of air in a sweater. And that's really what, when the fishermen went out to, to the Atlantic in this really harsh condition, those little pockets of air is what kept them warm. Even when their sweater got wet, it didn't go straight through to their skin. These little pockets of air regulated and kept their body warm. And then these chunky stitches that the, that the, the mothers and the wives were doing eventually kind of started turning into these patterns, like these patterns like that were mimicking the things that they saw around themselves every day. So the one that everybody would recommend would know normally is that is a fisherman's cable. It's that one that looks like looks like. Um, so if even, we can look at the, the the one that you have in your hand there, next to the placket, this is what we call the strand stitch. You see these these parallel lines on just just to the left of that. See these parallel lines going along here. So that's that's that is that's inspired by. If you ever see right after the tide goes out on a sandy beach, you see these parallel lines yeah. that mimic where yep. the way the waves. Yep. And so that's that that's is is is, is kind of uh, the memory of that, and it's really just it's, it's just another s symbol to think back of where the where these stitches really came from. The next one over to the right is this is actually just a flattened fisherman's cable. So the fisherman's cable would normally be the one that you see just to the right of that, which is a normal just a loop going. Uh, uh, this would represent like the ropes that a fisherman would use to draw in their nets or raise their sails or things like that. And it's it, it's a symbol of hard work and the reward for that. And, and as, as you can see here, and as this lovely close-up, you can see the marl and the yarn. All yeah. the, this sweater, every color in it is made from what we call a marl yarn. So you can see in the parsnip there, there's actually two separate colors within that mm -hmm. color, which we're mm -hmm. calling parsnip. There's an element of natural, which is the white, and then there's also an element, a slightly brown, kind of toasted element as well, which yeah. which would be kind of like the oatmeal element. And really, what this is trying to do is because of the uh, wool is a natural fiber. It behaves a certain a certain way, like when it's being dyed, certain parts of the fiber will take dye a little bit better. So you always get this natural variation, something that you don't necessarily get when you get a synthetic fiber, which can which is kind of a very solid color with no natural variation. So adding this two colors in it is actually trying to kind of emphasize that natural variation. And what it does is it allows you to really um, exaggerate these beautiful three-dimensional structures that you're trying to create in the garment. All these beautiful, like, the, it, it helps the, showing the shadow of the, the rise and fall of where the, the cables are. And we intentionally chose all marl studs for this uh, garment because we really wanted to, to show off um, such a, a wealth of what we were able to do um, in the style of this wear. I love it. I love it. And I don't, Barry, I don't know. I hope this doesn't make you fall off your chair. I normally do not like wool. I normally cannot wear wool. So uh, you're right about the merino wool is so soft. But I love, and I'm not, I, I'm also not like a, cons like a, like a classic cardigan girl. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the m m variety of cable stitches and the, the tapestry that it creates in this sweater gives it so much visual interest. I love the cute little kissing front, like sans mm -hmm. the buttons because it makes it very clean. Um, I, I, the length of it, like I just think it is fantastic. It's gorgeous. It will act like a little um, coat again, like a short little mm -hmm. jacket kind of cardi coat. But I would also say, you know, you guys um, decided to join us live tonight at the perfect time because, you know, obviously for all of us um, who celebrate, Christmas and also Hanukkah are on the way. And I just, I think these make for extraordinary gifts because, you know, my husband and I went to Ireland uh, back in 2017 before we adopted our daughter. And we visited both Dublin and I'm gonna pull up the pictures and remind myself. Um, do you know where Ballyfin is? 
Ballyfin Manor. Oh, Ballyfin is the hotel. Ballyfin, Bally, Ballyfin is very close, actually, to where we manufactured these in Monastery. Oh. It's actually the next, the next county over. That's the most. That's one of the most beautiful hotels in the world. It's incredible. By the way, fun fact, owned by somebody, some guy from Chicago, like what? But mm. anyway, um, and I just, I feel like were you to travel to Ireland and, and see one of those tiny little shops off a cobblestone walkway, once you've diverted yourself off the main drag, like you would see one of these in the window of a tiny little shop with a little shingle out front. And I mean, that to me is what makes gifting anything from our Irish programming so special. Barry, you are a treat. Uh, thank you very much. And I think you made a very good point there. Like, so you're saying you're not traditionally someone who goes for a car to get it. And I think by the end of this hour, we may have changed your mind on, uh, on, that, on that. Thousand percent. Because this, this, for example, this, this is it's a great bridge piece. For someone who, who has, doesn't want to get the traditional, the traditional format, this is something a little bit more modern that I think may bridge the gap between someone who wants something in modern garments but also still wants to try something in merino wool or cable stitch. Incredibly so, yep. Um, colors, thank you, Barry. The colors are standby. I am in my favorite, which is that olive. We 